Hey everybody, Matt from Eastwood. One of the most common things you can do to a custom car is to lower it or change the stance. An old school way is to drop the body over the chassis or to channel it. In this video, we're gonna show you how to do a mild three inch channel on this 30 Model A Coupe that I recently picked up. So let's show you what we're working with. After we were done building our custom chassis, we had a place to set our body down on top of. Since we'll be cutting some of the structure out of the center of the car, we started by putting a brace widthwise in the body between the B-pillars. We started by cutting the entire floor out of the bottom of the car and leaving the door sill and lengthwise braces intact. We cranked up the power on the VersaCut 60 and cleanly punched out the factory rivets holding the firewall braces in place. With the entire floor removed, we used the plasma cutter to cut out the amount we wanted to channel the body down over the chassis on the firewall. We made sure the cuts were just a little bigger than the frame width so the firewall could slip over the frame rails. Now that the floor was cut out of the bottom of the car, we were able to test fit the body on the chassis. Next, we rolled the rear axle with the wheels and tires we'd be using next to the body and transferred marks to the rear inner fenders just a little higher than the height of the axle tube. We then used scrap metal as guides to run our torch against as we made the rear axle notches in the rear inner fenders. We then bolted the rear axle in place and set the back half of the body down over the axle. We next temporarily set the drivetrain into the frame to get a better idea of loaded ride height. We then clearanced the firewall to fit the drivetrain. With the body back on the frame, we stood back and checked the side profile of the car, and then we clearanced the front and rear notches to get the body height exactly how we wanted. All right, now that we have the body sitting down over the chassis at a height that we like, we're ready to start on the subfloor. Now the first thing I had done was I had two pieces of eighth inch steel bent up to 90 degrees that run basically the length of the cabin of the car. These pieces are gonna sit over the chassis like this, and they're gonna be modified slightly so that they sit against the rocker right where we cut out the floor originally. After that, we have these pieces of U-channel that are also made out of eighth inch steel. They're gonna run across the width of the chassis connecting everything together like this. After we do a few modifications, we can weld all these pieces together, and then we can drill some holes and set everything up so that the body will bolt on just like factory. So let's get started. Because the body of a Model A pinches in at the front and the rear, we needed to modify the side rails to match the same profile. We took small pie cuts out of the rails at a few spots around the A and B pillars that allowed us to pull the side rails out to match the original inner rocker area. Because we made pie cuts, the gap of the cut was closed up as we bowed the rails outward. We then clamped the rails in place and welded up each seam, locking the shape into the side rails. With the first side rail welded and the welds dressed, you can really see the shape we put into it next to an uncut piece. When we originally had the side rails bent up, we had the top portion of the rail made a little wider than we needed since we didn't know the final shape of the side rail until we modified it. With the side rails back in place, we marked out the excess material and trimmed it off with the plasma cutter. Now we moved on to making our cross bracing for the subfloor. Because we've dropped the body of the car down over the chassis, our drive shaft now sits higher than the height of the floor in the rear. We cut a piece of Schedule 80 pipe in half to make a quick hoop for the center of our rear brace. We then used the TIG 200 to weld the three pieces together. The 
The rest of the cross braces were cut to length and we then worked our way towards the back of the car, spacing each brace out evenly and welding them in place. With the braces all welded in place, we used mini pinch weld clamps and C-clamps to pull the original rocker on the car against our new subrails tightly. We then laid equally spaced stitch welds along the length of each side rail, connecting the body to our new subfloor bracing. I then fabricated some simple front braces that will connect the firewall to the new subfloor. Next, we clamped the braces in place and reused the original rivet holes to plug weld the braces to the firewall and stitch welded them to the subfloor. Now that the subfloor is pretty much complete, I drilled pilot holes into the end of each cross brace and straight down into the top of the frame rails. I wanted all of the hardware holding the body to the chassis to be grade 8, so I started by locking a batch of nuts onto a carriage bolt and chucking it up in the lathe. I then machined off the hex portion of the nuts, leaving me with round, threaded, grade 8 bungs that were just a hair bigger than half inch in diameter. I then drilled out the pilot holes in the chassis to half inch and countersunk them to give us a valley to layer weld puddle in. Because the holes in the chassis were just a little bit smaller than our threaded inserts, we were able to easily seat them just below the conical area of the hole and set them straight with a rubber mallet. With each of the threaded inserts in place, I carefully welded them to the chassis, making sure the weld puddle stayed only on the edge of the insert while also filling the bevel. Now that the threaded inserts were welded flush, we were able to put the body back on the chassis and thread our mounting bolts down through the cross braces, securely fixing the body to the chassis. Well, with the body bolted back down, I think we nailed the profile of this car. Now, the materials we used to build this part of the project were pretty simple, and most of our time was spent in just getting everything to match the contour of the inside of the car. Now this isn't the only way that you can channel a vehicle, but we thought it was a pretty slick way that's really simple and gives almost an OEM look. Hopefully you can use some of these ideas for your next project. Make sure you like us on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more technical videos like this. Thanks for watching.